All right. So normally what I do is I will do a tiny little dab. So um, for this example, I'm gonna do, can you guys see this? Mm -hmm. I have like a broken blood vessel here. So I'm gonna put the color corrector on um, and I'm just gonna use a tiny little, tiny little bit. And then I um, wait a few seconds for it so it's not like still super liquidy. I want it to get like a little bit tacky. And then I just kind of either take my finger and kind of push it in and around the area that I want. And then I'll take the tip of my beauty blender and I'll also just kind of start to dab it and push it. And I do this before I put before I put my um, foundation on. So I put my color corrector on and then I'm gonna put foundation over it. Okay. So right now you're like, oh my God, but it looks green. I'm like, but it's not red, but it looks green. But it's not gonna look green. The green counterbalances the red. So I'm gonna show you two different ways to do foundation. We're gonna do a powder foundation and we're gonna do a liquid foundation. Um, both of these are mineral based. Um, a lot of people think like, what's the difference in the different brands of mineral makeup? Bare Minerals actually has a lot of fragrance and a lot of chemicals. So take a look at their ingredients and you'll see there's nothing bare about Bare Minerals. <laughs> um, so there are plenty of other mineral makeup um, brands out there that have less ingredients. One of the things I like about this specific brand, Sweet Minerals, is that it doesn't have bismuth in it, um, and that can create um, that itchy. Like if you ever get like, like, like your eyes itch, sometimes that can be bismuth. Um, it is very irritating, and it's in a ton of makeup. Um, the other thing about mineral makeup is it has a natural SPF to it. So when you're using the... Um, not the liquid, but when you're using the powder, you're actually getting um, SPF um, as well. So we're gonna do, all right. I'm gonna do the liquid on this side and I'll do the powder on this side. Okay, <laughs> so a lot of times people also think when they're picking out a foundation, here's like a couple hacks and a couple tricks for that. When you are testing foundation out, you actually wanna test it on your forehead. Not on the inside of your arm, that is not the color of your face. So test it on your forehead, not the side of your cheek. Your cheeks tend to be a little bit rosy. So your forehead gives you a really good baseline of the color that's going to look good. And don't go too light. It actually is recommended that you go, if you're going to pick, you need to actually go a little bit darker, not lighter. Because then you end up with ghost face. All right, so what I do with my liquid is I put it, I put a little bit on the side of my hand first. And with liquid foundation, you can use your fingers to rub it in. I like to use a beauty blender. It's just, I like to do it. So I'm gonna tweak it and I'm gonna start kind of putting it around. And I'm um, pushing it into my skin. And you'll also see with the like kabuki brush that I push it into my skin as well. That's called like stippling. And you're just pushing, pushing, pushing the product in. And the other thing that's really great about mineral makeup, whether it's the foundation or the um, eyeshadows, is that it's buildable. So buildable is really nice um, because you can go as light or as dark as you need, start small, and then like work your way up. So this particular application, and I go all the way up in and around my eye, because I'm going to come back with concealer to help cover up the underneath part of my eye. And as you see, like you can't see that green anymore. <laughs> the green is green. Um, so what, you could stop right here if you like a light um, application, but if you're somebody that really wants like a darker or um, thicker coverage, you want more full coverage, and you just add more. And you saw that I really didn't have that much on. I really didn't use a lot. When you use your fingers, you tend to get a lot in the pores. That is one, one of the reasons why you wet your um, beauty blender because it's not absorbing the product as much in. It's really just staying on the surface of the beauty blender and so you're not wasting product. So you get more out of it.
All right, so I think that's good for, for now. I could certainly go heavier if I wanted to. Um, you know, if I was having my pictures done or something and I really wanted more of a heavy application, I could do it. All right, let's do the powder. And you can just kind of see the difference. So I put, I usually tap powder into the lid of any of my mineral makeup. And I take my brush and I'm gonna push it in and then tap, 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 because you don't want all that makeup to fall just on your clothes or all over your counter. You don't want to waste it and save it. And I'm gonna go and do this side. So this container um, of foundation, this lasts me, and I use it every day, lasts me about four months. So some of the products like some of the products from found that you see like on the on the table and when we get to browse I'll talk a little bit about that too things that are in pencil form things that are in liquid form they tend to get used up pretty quickly um, and so then you have to buy them more often and so what a lot of people aren't factoring in when they're looking at the prices of things they're like oh this is twelve dollars but if you have to buy it every month then the thing that was $18 that lasted six months is way cheaper, right? So just kind of think about how often you have to buy something and if that is, you know, something that fits within your budget. And so both of these are the same color from the same, from the same brand. And there's a couple schools of thought as to what, what's better and what, yeah. And it really is just about like what your preference is. If you tend to have oily skin or you want that SPF built in, then powder is the way. I also feel like powder lasts, the powder lasts a little bit longer. You'll go through the liquid um, more quickly. Also, I've heard too from women that have, you know, we're 40 or over, um, then you're worried about it settling into your creases. And so people try to avoid powder, but you actually can use a beauty blender with powder and apply it and it won't sit on top of the creases as much as if you had just, you know, put, put the powder on. So the coverage is relatively the same on my face. It doesn't, you know, there's not much difference between the liquid and the powder. It really is just a preference. And again, both are buildable. So if I wanted more coverage, I can put a little more on it. I just... I use the powder more often. I just like powder on um, the feel of it. It doesn't feel heavy. Um, and it also doesn't have um, as many ingredients. And so if I got lazy, I would sleep in it maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm not really saying that. <laughs> okay, so there I've got my foundation and now I'm gonna work on my concealer. And uh, the focal area, uh, the focal area parts, parts that I'm going to focus on, um, under my eyes, bridge of my nose. Some people like to do brows. Um, it's just like your preference. Some people don't like to do the bridge of their nose. That's fine too. Um, this is concealer. So concealer can come in liquids or powders. Um, liquids for me, always I go through really quickly. This concealer lasts about a year. And so I'm going to take my beauty blender. I'm going to put a little. That's why I like these because I use them to get into the creases a bit. And then I'm starting to put it underneath. So when I start, and then I'm just. I'm going to go all the way under. And so what this helps with is if you have dark circles or something like that. Um, and it just helps to really brighten your eye area. And I just kind of pull it a little bit on top of the eyelid. And then I'm just really pushing it into the crease and down around. I tend to, I always feel like the sides of my eyes always look like blue because the skin's very thin, right? And so you're seeing like um, uh, veins and things like that. So 
I don't want it to be like super noticeable, but you can tell that this, this side is brighter um, than this side. It's not like huge dramatic. I mean, certainly you can go as, again, it's buildable, so you can be as dramatic as you want. Um, but I feel like less is more. I don't like the waste product and I want it to last a long time. So then I'm just pushing, pushing, pushing. I'm not really, especially under the eye, I'm not dragging. So you see a lot of people that like wipe their makeup like that. It really, um, it's not doing anything for you. You're wasting product and you're, you're um, pulling your skin, which you're not really supposed to do. There are lots of people that like to do their eyeshadows first because eyeshadow can sometimes fall and then you get like powder under your eyes and you're like, oh, I just did my eyes. Um, I'm going to show you some tips and tricks on how to avoid that. I like to just set my face first um, because otherwise I'd be like wiping around the makeup that I just did. I have seen some hacks too where um, people will come back in after they're done. They'll come back in and they'll take like the corner um, with like concealer and go up and make like a sharp line to to make it really like angular to help their makeup look more like a, a, like a wing. Um, I don't really feel like that's necessary, but you know, I'm not a YouTuber, so I don't. It's, it's, it's necessary for them, you know. All right, um, I'm going to do a little on the bridge of my nose and then we'll move, move on. So I just bring it down. I don't go too high up. I don't want too much in the center. I don't want to like draw attention to the center of my eyebrows. Like that's not. So I'll just put a little on the top and I've got that on the sides. All right. I'm going to do my, my cheeks. I'll do my cheeks next. I usually do my eyebrows next because that's like, I can't see my eyebrows and I feel like my face doesn't, uh, I don't like my face without eyebrows. I like eyebrows. So it's interesting, a lot of times people will pick blush um, based on, like they want it to be super peachy, um, which is fine. Um, blush is supposed to be on your cheeks. Right, so people will pick like pink colors and things, which is, which is fine. Um, if you're not looking for something that looks super dramatic, then um, something that looks almost like foundation, something that looks almost like um, bronzer, if it's matte, will also do a really good job. This is a this is a blush, but it is a more of a brown looking um, blush. Um, so I'm just going to show you that just because I like it. All right, when you are doing when you are doing blush. You can either do your bronzer first or you can do your blush. It doesn't matter because you're going to have to go over both of them again anyway. Um, so when you're doing your blush, um, a tip and a trick is to use two fingers. You use two fingers, that's really showing you where your cheek is. You do not want blush all the way down here or all the way in your, like, in your nose, right? Because we have a tendency to go like, like that. But what you really want is just right here. We're going to come in a little bit here with some bronzer to highlight the side of our face. But right here, we're just giving it like a little, and if you have a petite face, like it's even more important that you're using this finger because you don't have the long, you know. So you can see that it isn't super dramatic. It's not a lot, but it definitely looks like there's something, you know, something there. And then you can just put more and more. You can just kind of build it. That's the, that is one of the beauties of powder. Okay, same thing, I'm going to come over here, and then just do that, just a little bit. Okay, I'm going to use um, the same brush, because it is not essential that you have a gajillion brushes. So I just take like a paper towel, get a little bit off, and then I'm going to go in with bronzer. So bronzer, you want to make an E on your face. So you want to come here, here, here with bronzer. 
And then sometimes if you mess up a little bit, that's when you blend it all in. So I'm going to put it here. And then I like this because it has a little bit of an angle. And so I'm going to come a little deeper here and then around. I'm going to go like this. Boom, boom, boom. And you don't see any harsh lines. I'm not into the harsh lines. You know, sometimes, like, people are really into, like, the really carved out cheekbone thing. The reality is that most of us don't have carved out cheekbones. Most of us have fuller faces. And so when we try to create creases where there are not, like, creases and, and um, angles, it looks fake and weird. So go with your natural, like whatever naturally, your natural shape of your face. So veil, mineral veil, um, is basically finishing powder. So where a lot of that will come in a compact, you're rubbing that on your face and you're dragging your makeup. This is more of like dusting a powder on and it is a setting powder. It's going to set your makeup um, and that will help it last longer and it minimizes pores. Um, this one was made really for like photo shoots. I love it. Um, it looks like it's purple. It doesn't look white, but it doesn't go on purple. I do use a different brush for that. Um, so I take up. Um, this is what really makes, um, gives that like airbrushed, airbrush finish and airbrush look, and it sets your powder. And so I'll show you too. Um, you also can use a beauty blender for that. Okay. So I take the other side of my beauty blender, one that doesn't have the foundation on it, and I will push it in. So if you're worried about creases, like getting into creases, this is a great solution um, because it also is giving it um, a little bit of moisture too, right? Because the Beauty Blender is already wet. So if you don't have a different brush, this is great because you don't need another brush. You can just use the other side of your, of your Beauty Blender. So it does the same thing as the brush. All right. Yay, we get to do brows. Mm -hmm. so, excited. so I do not like to get my brows waxed. I don't like um, the wax itself. It, um, I feel like it hurts. Mm -hmm. um, so I use a razor to shape my brows. And so um, that is something that, you know, is you can do too. I like to, when I'm shaping my brows, I will actually draw my brows on and then come in with the razor around it. And so you're kind of giving yourself that template. So, um, cause if you do it, I don't know, it's hard. It's hard to, to shave and pluck if you don't know, if you don't know what you're trying to achieve. So I like to draw them on first. I use um, a powder brow product um, because it's mineral based. I have a lot of issues. I came to mineral makeup because I had a lot of issues with my eyes itching and I started getting weird scabs. I got these weird like scabs on my eyelids and I'm like, what is this from? What is this from? Um, and as soon as I changed and got rid of, and I was using, um, Urban Decay, which is like, you know, I think that's Urban Decay. Um, and it just, I, I like the colors. They're pretty but um a lot of people they have it has a lot of bismuth in it and so it just makes eyes very itchy so as soon as i stopped using that oh, my eyes are better. i was running into an issue too with eyeliner where my eyes were constantly watering and so i thought oh something is getting in my eyes like is it my mascara is it this i started switching things out and to find out it was my eyeliner All right, so brows. Now, 
A tip about your brows is that they are not supposed to be twins, they're sisters. Your brows are not supposed to be identical on both sides. Your eyes are probably a little bit different shaped or even maybe one's a little bit higher or lower. That's totally normal. Um, and the idea is not to make them twins. So embrace a little bit of the difference um, between your, uh, your brows there. I mean, I wouldn't say they should be enemies, but <laughs> they don't need to be twins. Okay. So this is where the pomade comes into play. So I use pomade on uh, my eyeliner and my, my um, eyebrow powder because powder can tend to fall a bit. And so what this pomade is doing is it's making it more creamy and it's easy to um, create very specific lines and designs with your makeup by using, still using powder, but by adding a pomade to it. All right, so that's what I'm gonna do. So I start on the inside and work my way out. So I start in the middle, like I hardly have like any hair here. So I'm basically like gonna draw on here. So I'm gonna start here and make like a little line. And then I'm gonna come up and draw up under and then around. So I'm creating like a little stencil. And then I'm going to come here and connect. And then I'll add more and fill it in. So you can go as bold as you want. It's like the uh, brows are very bold now. It's very like in. And what I'm doing is I'm softening those lines. I don't, I didn't want it to be a very harsh line. It was a harsh line at first to draw, but I like it to be a little softer. Um, other people, I mean, I see lots of YouTubers and bloggers that have uh, harsh, and it looks great on them. It just, for me, it, it wouldn't, I don't feel like it would work well because I don't have the hair in there. So I need to kind of um, soften, soften it up. So, and the more you just kind of pull on it, pull on it, and just play around with it, you're going to get your desired look. So choose one that kind of is maybe a little bit darker than your hair. You don't want to match your hair exactly. You a little bit darker. And do the same thing on this side. And you don't come all the way down. Your eyebrows like don't come all the way down. Um, look at, at your natural hairline um, or if yours tend to be a little bit shorter you may want to like basically it's like this this is the trick so this is where your your eyebrow should stop so if you just take a pencil to the corners and go like that that's kind of where you don't want to go beyond that really unless you're really going for a a real interesting fun look And now when I put my eye makeup on, I'll know where it needs to go. That's why I like to do my brows before I do my eye makeup, because I'll know how far to, um, to pull them up, how far to pull the eyeshadow up, and I just kind of, I just get a better, a better idea. You can get a nice, um, gentle, smoky eye with mauves, with light purples, with lilacs. It does not have to be gray or black. It does not have to be scary. The idea is really about layers. So when you're going to do like a smoky eye look, you're going to do three different layers. You're going to do a base layer, a crease layer, and a brightener. And so with mineral makeup, I tap it upside down, any kind of powder, tap upside down. I want it in the lid and I'm going to use the lid to get it onto my brush. I like to use a, a flat brush like this. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
flat brush. I put it on both sides and then tap, 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 tap. And then you just kind of apply, I just feel like that. I don't think it matters. However you get it on. You get it on. Let's get it on. And remember, it's buildable. So start basic and then start to layer. And so I'm going all the way up to the brow, and all the way in, up to the brow, around. I'm even coming, I'm coming outside the eye. So I'm not staying right in here. I'm coming outside to so think to where that um, the end of that brow is. Okay, I'm gonna need a different brush for the crease brush. They make all kinds of brushes, right? There are brushes for everything. I like a couple simple brushes. I like to have a nice flat brush, and then I like a crease brush. Because a crease brush, you actually can make eyeliner-ish as well. So it helps limit, you know, all the brushes that you have to have all the time. And then I'm going to go into the crease. I'm going to push, I'm literally going to push all the way to about here on the eye. If you have round eyes, if your eyes are super round, then um, you don't want to go all the way in. You're going to stay a little bit like out here. So if you have really round eyes, you're going to go about there about halfway, okay? But um, if you don't, no. <laughs> if you have round, you, I mean, you do not have round eyes. I'll just tell you. You have like an almond, like an almond eye, oh, which so is, you're like a bit. <laughs> if you have, yeah, like, it's, yeah, it's just like more of like um, round, We'll, we'll, well, I'll pull up some pictures. I'll pull up some pictures. So you're going to go into the crease. Now, sometimes when you either get a little bit older or if you have deep set eyes, then you don't, you, it would disappear, right? Like if you were all the way back into the crease, if you have deep set eyes. So if that's the case, then open your eye and then put it a little bit lower because then when you open your eye, it creates a fake crease. So I'm into the I'm into the crease here, and now this is what this is what scared me um, at first when I saw this trend. I'm like, no, this is awful. You take this dark color and you go underneath your eyes. I know it sounds like you're gonna like be um, like a zombie, but you're not. All right, so you take this color and you're making a V. You're making a V. So you're coming out a little bit more, coming out a little bit more. As we're going, you guys want the little brown one. And then you come underneath your eyelashes. A little bit. Okay. So it's not scary. It's not scary. So my crease. My crease is done. I've made black eyes. And now I'm going to come in with my, um, like a shimmer, like a brightener. I really love this um, gold one. I just feel like it makes every eye pop. Um, okay, so I'm just tap, 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 tap a little brightener. And you could even use this as your base eyeshadow. Like if you just wanted eyeshadow, a little mascara, and go. This kind of color is really pretty for that. This is, I'm, we just picked the real drama, right? We picked a lot of drama. You guys picked it. You guys picked it. Okay. And so I'm coming in. Tap, tap, tap. You also, with something like this, can do it like, like you would a highlighter because it's such a bright color. So you can come in here and do the inner, inner parts of your eyes. You can come up just like a highlighter, and do your brow if you want. When it comes to powder liner, you can use eyeshadow. You do not need eyeliner. You can use an eyeshadow, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm using this darker color. I'm going to use the pomade with that. I like that because, number one, um, it doesn't have any of the ingredients that make my eyes itch. And we're going to talk about tight lining versus like 
regular eye eyeliner this is tight lining and you'll see why it's important that it doesn't itch because we're literally going to like jam it into our eye so again i'm like dipping into the pomade just like a little bit on the brush i mean you can even like scrape off the sides it's not a lot it's a tiny little bit and then i'm push 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 and i'm getting it on the corners and on the sides of the brush too and then tap but you can see like nothing's really coming out because it's all in with the pomade so it's not going to get all over your face which is exciting so with the eyeliner i start out here now we're going to do a little bit of a wing right a little cat eye a little wing um and a lot of times the mistake that people make is they start trying to draw a wing we're not going to do that we're going to line the eye and then we'll go in and add a little flare okay so I'm going to hold my eye. I'm not pulling my eye. I'm not grabbing my eye. That's one of the nice things about using the powder and a pomade versus a pencil. You don't have to, you're not ripping and pulling your skin and holding your eye. It glides very easily and you use a very little bit. So I'm holding my eye and I am pushing downward into the lash line. That's the other mistake a lot of times people make is they draw up over, like on their eyelid, and it really, eyeliner is supposed to be like in your lash line. It's supposed to be in between your lashes, not up on your eye. So you're gonna come down, you're pushing in to your lashes, and then you stop right about here, turn your brush, and with your eye open, go back from the inside out. A lot of times people will go like this, and you end up getting a bunch in the corner of your eye. So by turning the brush around and just going like that, you see it's not, it's just in my, it's basically just lining my eye and it's making my, um, it's going to make my lashes and everything look fuller, which is one of the points of it. Now, tight lining is where you actually go underneath and line from under, okay? So you would kind of hold your lash up and you're putting sorry I can't talk to you and you're putting the product putting the powder or your eyeliner like underneath on the underneath side so that's why it does matter you don't want something to be itchy <laughs> Um, if you're if you're going to do that and so tight lining for the lower would be the same thing you would go up on here all the way around that's just not the look i like for my lower lashes so i'm not going to do that i'll i will sometimes occasionally just pull a little bit i'm dragging like through the lower lashes just a little bit and just like that and leave it like that now to go back in to add some flare because we want to make like a little cat eye there's a couple different options you can, um, a very like simple little, little one is you're just gonna hold the brush with this big part of the angle towards your lid, go towards the line, and then you're just gonna go, pink. you're just gonna make a tiny little, teensy, tiny little line. You see that? So it's just tiny, little, it's cute, it'll look great with mascara, it's nothing super dramatic. But we can go dramatic. So if you want to do a thicker cat eye, then you're going to start the same thing. You're going to kind of pull out a little bit, and then you turn the brush around, and you're going to draw in to your eye all the way almost to the center of the eye. You're going to make a big line. And I'm done. So see, you can go as thick or as thin as you want. And that's one, another thing we were talking about, like with the, the fact that you can build with this kind of makeup. When you're using powders, you really can build and do a lot more than if you are stuck with a liquid. Liquids are very hard to work with and they're very precise. There's no give to it. So like if I had messed up, I can kind of, Take my finger, 
move the, you know, move the makeup around a little bit, it's a bit more forgiving. I'm gonna go and just do this eye pretty quick. All right, so with mascara, here's a couple things that people do wrong. Number one, they pump their mascara. They're like, oh, I really want to get like a lot of mascara. No, that's you're getting bacteria and air, okay, inside. And it's gonna dry your mascara out and it's like bacteria, whatever. So you pull your mascara out, and you see how there's like like little clumpies on the end. A lot of times people put it back in. No, this is like what makeup artists what makeup artists do is they just put that on a tissue. Just like go like that. And now you don't have to worry. It's not going to create a lot of clumps. It's much more clump free. So you start at the base of your, of your lash and you're really kind of pulling up. So you're starting to kind of wiggle and pull, wiggle and pull, wiggle and pull and poke yourself in the eye. That's how it always works, right? Um, and so, and then I will put layers on. So that's the other thing. It's like, Carrie Underwood, by the way, she uses six different mascaras every time she, like, at once, at once, six layers of mascara. Like, I don't got time for that, but, so you want to pull and pull and pull, and if you want to do the underneath side, you can do a little bit. I tend to find that mascara under the eyes always falls and you end up getting like a black eye look, right? So the other thing you can do with your mascara is that top part, I wipe that part off too. I don't want any gunkies. And a lot of people say like, oh, mineral mascaras, like they don't work. This is an herbal mineral mascara. Um, it is not waterproof. Um, it's just regular mascara. And then, so this is um, Sweet Minerals. All right, I'm gonna do one more layer, and then lips, and then, yay. Okay, so then I just go back in for my second layer, I go back in. There are some people that really like to come from the top down, all right? So a lot of makeup artists will do that on people. It can be quite a challenge to do yourself without getting it on your eyelid. And then, um, I like a dramatic lip. I love pink, so it's always pink for me. Yeah, I do. Whether it's like a tinted balm or a stick, something simple. I don't do lip liner. It's just another thing that I skip, right? And then it's on and I'm done. And it doesn't look like I have a black eye, right? No. I have always found that on every eye I've done on people um, and on myself, I always like to have a, a brightener right here. It just makes your eyes pop. And I think it makes them look youthful and glowy. And I just always find that that looks good on everybody. So you want a base color, a crease color, and like a bright color. That's Those are the three that you need. And then you can add to it if you need different day, night options.